Five Nights at Freddy's as a series started off on an extremely high note, as the first game has repeatedly been referred to as a masterpiece. None of the following games seem to be able to top what the original game brought to the table. However, in my mind, one game completely outclasses the other, even the original masterpiece that is Five Nights at Freddy's. While Five Nights at Freddy's 4 was, and still is, extremely different and varied compared to the rest of the series, I personally think that out of all the Five Nights at Freddy's games, Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is easily the best one. And in this video, I want to explain in extreme detail everything about this game that makes it so great. From the amazing horror and engaging gameplay, as well as having one of the most intense stories and experiences of any horror game, Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is the closest to a perfect experience in a game that you can get. And I do mean the perfect experience. No game is perfect and it's impossible for a game to be perfect. However, it is possible for a game to have a perfect experience, which Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 does expertly. So, without further ado, let's get into why Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 is easily the best Final Fantasy Freddy's game. Before I talk about the game itself and what makes it so great, let's talk about the game's development and reception for a minute. Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 development began shortly after the release of Final Fantasy Freddy's 3. The developer, Scott Cawthon, took inspiration from a nightmare that he had, where Scott was trapped in his bedroom when he saw Bonnie peering through the bedroom door. Scott got up to close it only to realise that the door was already locked, meaning Bonnie was in the room. This terrifying concept felt perfect for a horror game, and Scott got to work on Final Fantasy Freddy's 4. Upon release, the game would receive mixed reviews. Many people criticised the game's reliance on sound and jump scares to convey horror, which honestly was surprising to read. I remember even as a 14 year old thinking that these reviews were a bit over the top. While I can obviously understand the whole, you can't play this game in a loud environment, which is why I've never played it in the school library, I think that this whole, the game relies on blasting your ears off to scare you argument is really flawed. And I think now is a good time as ever to talk about what makes this game easily the scariest Fire to Freddy's game ever made. While this game definitely could never compete with the shock horror of Help Wanted, since viewing any horror scenario in a VR headset will always be more terrifying, Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 does the best with what it's given, and I think that this game has the best sound design since the first game, maybe even better than Final Fantasy Freddy's 1. Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 revolves around sound, requiring the player to use their ears in order to play the game. Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 is noticeably quieter than the previous and subsequent games. There's no phone call, there's no hand unit guiding you through, no Glamrock Freddy giving you instructions. In fact, this is the only Final Fantasy Freddy's game with absolutely no voice lines whatsoever. The only sounds in this game are designed to scare the player or to enhance the experience. The game is designed in such a way that you need to immerse yourself in the experience in order to play. One problem that a lot of horror games have is unless you're actually fully leaning into the horror, you don't always actually feel the horror. If you don't treat a horror game like a horror game, it won't be scary. Final Fantasy Freddy's 4, however, forces you to be involved in the horror as the entire game is reliant on sound, which is much harder to ignore than visuals. Sure, you can look away from your screen, but every sound is amplified, which makes jump scares super effective. Speaking of the jump scares, I want to take this moment to address the complaint about how the jump scares are too loud and the only reason that they are scary is because they blast your ears off and how it's not fun. While I can understand how it could be annoying if you are constantly getting the jump scare, in my mind, I think that it's ignoring the fact that the jump scares are meant to be surprising. Like that's what jump scares are meant to do. They're meant to knock you off your feet. It's meant to scare you. And while some people think it's lazy the way the jump scares are implemented, I'd argue that it's actually done extremely well and very intelligently. The whole game is setting you up for the jump scares. The actual ambience of Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 is super stressful. And because every single movement could result in death, you are always on edge. Every time you run to a door or look at the bed, there's a chance to get jump scared. The ambient sits in the background and acts more as a red herring. Grandfather clock chimes, dog barks, and metal noises play alongside the footsteps of the animatronics walking outside your room. Approaching a door is always stressful. When you first approach a door, the black abyss stares back at you and the unknown makes you nervous and stressed. Your hair stands up as you stare into the darkness and wait. The next three seconds are super stressful, and regardless of the outcome, you are worried and on your toes. If you hear breathing, it's an instant reaction, closing the doors and waiting to hear the footsteps lead. Afterwards, it's a mad dash to check on the other threats. If there's nothing, it's pretty easy to second guess yourself due to all the sounds surrounding you. 
you wonder if you heard correctly, and this causes a second attention which honestly rivals that of being jump scared. The jump scares themselves are also super effective due to the jump scare sounds. Honestly, one of my favourites in the series, the thunderous roar contrasts very well with the creepy ambience. And while I think that Sister Location and Final Fantasy 1 have better jump scare sounds overall, Final Fantasy 4 is definitely up there, and the design of the animatronics helps with that as well. A lot of people believe that the designs of the Final 4 animatronics is over the top and they try way too hard to be scary. However, I would argue that this isn't the case. In terms of design, these designs just are absolutely horrifying and definitely fit the Nightmare theme extremely well. Nightmare Foxy, Nightmare Fredbear, and Nightmare are among the most effective. Nightmare Freddy is in my mind the weakest, which I'll get to later on, but I still think that he works extremely well. Nightmare Bonnie and Nightmare Chica are super awesome to look at, and Nightmare Chica especially is horrifying. Nightmare Bonnie is too, but I've always found Chica more effective in my mind. However, Nightmare Foxy takes the cake for the original four. Something to note about these designs is I think that works well to their advantage, is how they are viewed in the game. If Final Fantasy IV operated like Final Fantasy I, with us constantly seeing them on a camera system and constantly looking at them, I feel their designs would indeed be extremely over the top and just get old super quick. However, in Final Fantasy IV, the Nightmare animatronics only show themselves for split seconds, whether it's lurking behind a wall or literally jump scaring you. Fredbear and Nightmare are the only two who actively stand in the hallway, but even still, they only stand there for a second and it's up to you to either block them out or let them in. These split second moments are perfect complements to the Nightmare designs, as they don't overstay their welcome and only hang around as long as they are needed. The only characters who get viewed more than the others, being Nightmare Foxy, Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare, are among the stronger designs. So for these characters, being in the spotlight makes perfect sense. Now looking at how the characters behave, each character requires you to get up close and personal with them in order to deal with them. With Nightmare Freddy, you have to turn to the bed and flash the freddles and pray you haven't left them there too long to manifest and be risk being jump scared. Nightmare Bonnie and Nightmare Chica are very similar, and we discussed the horror of having to listen to the breathing already, but out of the main four, Nightmare Foxy probably instills just as much fear as anyone else. Nightmare Foxy looks for an opportunity to enter your room, and once he does, you have the same ticking time bomb that was so terrifying from Final Fantasy Freddy's 1, and having that threat literally be right in front of you is a whole other level of terrifying. What's more, but Foxy can jump scare you even before he kills you, and it's always startling hearing his bark. Foxy also puts the pressure on, way more than Nightmare Freddy. If Foxy gets into your room, the pressure is on, and this tension just causes the player to panic and once again, adds to the fear of the game. Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare behave very differently to any of the other previous characters, but one thing that makes them so terrifying is something I've always loved about even the original Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 game, and that is Fredbear's laugh. The laugh indicates that Fredbear has moved to either the bed or the closet, you have to either shine the light on him or close the closet door in his face to deal with him. However, something that this game did that has been a staple in every game before this is mess with the RNG, making it that sometimes Fredbear doesn't move when he laughs, and the panic of trying to find him, knowing that you only have a limited amount of time to do it, is horrifying. When you beat a night, you aren't greeted to the traditional granular chimes of 6am, you get this loud and irritating alarm clock which not only has some lore elements, but it also makes you feel like you are never completely safe, as the sound is still able to cause some friction. It's kinda like the comparison of waking up to a Samsung alarm versus an Apple one. Now enough about the horror, with talking so much about how the game operates, let's discuss why I believe that Final Fantasy IV has one of the most fun and engaging gameplay loops in the entire series. Final Fantasy Freddy's 4's gameplay loop is definitely the most involved out of the first four games. Unlike the previous games, there is no downtime. In Final Fantasy Freddy's 1, you can relax and not have to worry about Foxy or Freddy when either the left or right door is closed. In Final Fantasy Freddy's 2, you don't have to really worry about anything if the alarm isn't sounding. And in Final Fantasy Freddy's 3, there is a ton of downtime, just patiently waiting for Springtrap to move. However, in Final Fantasy Freddy's 4, you have to constantly be moving at all times and always be on the lookout for any actions that you need to take, whether it's closing a door on Bonnie or Chica, making sure that Foxy doesn't make it into your closet or repelling him or Freddy from attacking once in the room. The constant need to move and to make the right move is really clever game design and helps with the horror so much more. On the main four nights, there usually isn't a second where someone needs to be dealt with, 
Bonnie and Chica are constantly approaching the door, and in some instances actually teleport to the door, which forces you to react immediately. The gameplay loop is designed in such a way where you constantly need to be locked in if you want to beat it, otherwise you will die. Now the sound design is obviously a huge part of this game, as the entire point of the game is to use the sound around you in order to beat it. Every character in this game utilizes sound in order to count them. Starting with the most obvious, Bonnie and Chica will roam around the upper part of the house and enter each of their respective halls, which you can hear them doing through the sounds of their footsteps. If you flash the hall while they are at the end of the hall, you will repel them back to the middle position. However, if not, then they will move to your door, and you will have to listen for their distinct breathing sound and shut the door in their face. Then, you have to wait until you hear them walk away, and then it's safe to flash the hall. These two are the most basic, but definitely worthy threats and some of the most time consuming of the bunch, which adds to the stress of this game. Nightmare Foxy is probably the most complicated, and that's because he has two stages. Nightmare Foxy will roam around the upper part of the map, which you can hear his footsteps, which are also panned, and attempt to make it into your room. If you check the spot that he is waiting in, then he will be repelled like Bonnie and Chica. However, if you check the opposite door to the one he is waiting at, he will run into your room and enter your closet. From there, his gameplay shifts into that of Nightmare Freddy. Foxy will progress through a couple of stages in the closet, and if you don't check on him enough, then he will kill you. So you have to slam the door in his face every now and again to prevent him from killing you. Nightmare Freddy is the last of the main four, and probably the easiest. Over time, a bunch of mini Freddies known as Freddles will form on the bed, and you need to shine your light on the bed to force them to disappear. If you take too long to flash the bed, and the Freddles are there for enough time, the Nightmare Freddy will materialise and kill you. The four threats are present at four different parts of the room, meaning that you constantly have to deal with each character one at a time. You can deal with multiple characters at once, like with Final Freddy's 1 and 2, you just have to make sure that you give each character just enough time in order to deal with them, as well as make it to the other threats which you also have to deal with. Once again, the gameplay loop is designed in such a way where you need to make sure that you are constantly paying attention, and because of how tense the game is, you're constantly invested in everything going on in the game, and it's actually a lot of fun. Managing to survive is super satisfying, and unlike the other nights, this game's nights feel quite perfect. Final Freddy's 1 and 2 have long nights, while well, Final Freddy's 3 nights are shorter. There's less to deal with in that game, so it makes sense that the game has shorter nights. But the nights in Final Freddy's 4, which go for 6 minutes, feel balanced, and something about this game that I really like is that the whole experience feels fair. In the previous games, it's not uncommon for you to just die because the game said so, while well, Final Freddy's 4 was the first game to minimise RNG. Sure, it is still present, but every action that the animatronic threats can take can be dealt with if you make the right decision. Even with luck scenarios, losing feels like it was your fault, not the game's fault, and as a result, you want to continue playing to overcome the challenge, as everything in this game is so perfectly balanced that you know that with skilled enough gameplay, you can beat it. It's not like Final Freddy's 1 and 2, or even 3, where if something just goes wrong, you're just screwed. You can recover in Final Freddy's 4, and that alone makes this game so much more satisfying when you do fend off one of the threats. Now let's discuss the shift in gameplay on Night 5. Night 5 features a similar but whole new gameplay loop with Nightmare Fredbear. You still need to listen for his footsteps, but you have to visually look with your flashlight in order to see if he's at the door. Well, you actually don't, but it's hard to tell. You can either just shut the door and hope he was at the door, or flash the hall and risk letting Fredbear in by flashing the hall for too long. The laugh mechanic is also quite a test of skill, as you need to first identify if it was a fake laugh or not, and react correctly or else you will die. This night is usually seen as being easier than the first four, but if I'm being completely honest, that is not true at all. Every time I play this game, I always find myself dying on night 5. Fredbear is a tad frustrating to me, and maybe I'm just bad. However, it's still a ton of fun facing off against Fredbear. And I have to say that from a story perspective, it's super cool to see Fredbear. And speaking of the story... Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 has one of the more engaging and tragic on-screen stories in my mind. While not on the same level as the Missing Children Incident story or any VHS style videotape, the Final Fantasy Freddy's 4's minigames are actually scary, and not just because there are jump scares, but because of the tone during the cutscenes. There's always this low laughter whenever the brother is nearby, and that combined with the Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 inspired ambience fits super well with the visuals. This child is getting tormented constantly. It all builds up with the final cutscene, with the child's brother and his friends dragging him to the stage he fears so much, as we visually see how terrified this little boy is. The fact that an 8-bit minigame can convey that is amazing. 
And then the moment happens. Was that the bite of 87? Now, besides the creepy story, there's one more minigame in this game that I want to talk about, and that is the Plus Trap minigame. I actually think that this minigame is extremely well crafted and one of the more intense experiences in Final Fantasy Freddy's 4. The concept is simple. Plus Trap will move towards you when the light is off, but will freeze and hide when the light is on. In front of you is a red circle you need him to land on. If you did this successfully, you get to skip two hours of the next night. If not, then you get jump scared. But when the light is off, you can't see Plus Trap. How will you ever tell how close he is? Well, with your ears, the main thing that you've been using to play this game. If you listen ever so closely, you can hear Plus Trap run back and forth to the different rooms, and if timed correctly, allow you to win every time. While this game can easily be mastered on replay playthroughs, it's by far super stressful and really requires you to listen, even more than the main nights. It's a simple and fun minigame that fits extremely well into the main portion of the game. Now that's pretty much everything about this game and why I really enjoy it, but compared to the other games, what makes this one stand out so much to me? Well, it has to do with experience. My three favourite Final Fantasy Freddy's games all offer a unique experience that gets the player hooked from beginning to end. UCN is the weakest of my top three games in terms of experience, but it still conveys the point. UCN is a game about learning a bunch of different mechanics and combining them all in order to beat the hardest challenge. As an experience, despite the fact that it just seems like a random customizer game, there's more to it and getting hooked on trying to get better and better until you eventually beat the hardest mode. Final Fantasy 1 has one of the most efficient experiences. Watching people play this game for the first time with no context, I do have to say it does a great job of getting the player immersed into the experience. However, where Final Fantasy 1 and 4 differ comes down to how the player learns the mechanics. In Final Fantasy 1, the phone guy gives us a basic understanding on how to beat the game, but leaves it mainly up to the player. While this is super effective in developing horror, it does cause some players to kind of just sit there confused, which doesn't lead to great horror at times. This is one flaw that Final Fantasy 1 has, where its age really shows. However, Final Fantasy 4 changes things up and in my opinion has one of the more effective introductions of any Final Fantasy Freddy's games. The messages that pop up in the first night are super descriptive, and while they take away any mystery, they effectively tell you how to play the game. And then immediately after this introduction, the game throws the animatronic threats at you, and forces you to use what you have learned. The next night does add a new mechanic, and obviously the game doesn't tell you how to deal with Freddy or Foxy, but it teaches you the main concept of the game, and lets the player just learn how important hearing is to this game. And because of the silent reading and introduction, when the game does begin, the player gets immediately immersed into the experience and continues to be from beginning to end. And because of the tone and atmosphere of Final Fantasy Freddy's 1, which is basically the same the entire way, the constant feeling of dread at all times, it causes Final Fantasy Freddy's 4, in my mind, to have one of the most effective and engaging experience of any Final Fantasy Freddy's games. As an experience, Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 is the most effective, and in terms of horror, it absolutely nails it. Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 is terrifying, I think the reason that people don't like this game is simply because it is so scary. Which in my mind just shows how much of a work of art this game is. And that's why I think Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 is the best. The other games in the series have their moments and may be executed so well that they can be considered masterpieces, but Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 is a work of art from top to bottom, and only the original game has ever rivaled that. However, nearly 10 years later, this game still manages to continue building the fear that the Final Fantasy Freddy's series used to be so well known for, and it continues a legacy. Now quickly touching onto the DLC, I think that for what it was, it was pretty cool. I think once again, the character designs are unreal, and Nightmare On especially was super, super effective, and is up there with one of the more terrifying characters of the series. Nightmare BB in place of Plus Trap was an interesting choice, but one that I actually quite like. I really like his design, and I think that it is way more effective than Plus Trap. Nightmare Mangle is actually quite a great design too, and I think that having the constant radio static adds a quite a bit of challenge to this game. The Dracula designs are probably a bit too over the top for me, but it's a DLC for Halloween, so it is what it is. Not my favourite thing in the world, but it could be worse. Now, I did want to take a moment and talk about a couple of things about this game that I didn't really like for those who are curious. The main thing about this game that I really don't like is how Nightmare Freddy operates. Well, now, I think his mechanic is good, and I really think it makes you have to stay on your toes the entire time and make sure that you do shine the bed. However, my main issue is that for a game that is literally named after him, and considering he's on the box side of the game, he seems extremely absent from this game. Not only that, but he probably has the weakest jump scare. I personally think that Final Fantasy Freddy's 1's Freddy was one of the highlights of this entire game series. It's the only game where Freddy was the main character, the final boss. 
I feel like Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 could have utilized him a bit more somehow. Maybe instead of the Freddles, you had to push Freddy back from under the bed or something. That would have been really cool. But besides that, and Chica's cupcake jump scare, there's literally nothing else about this game I don't like. This game is a masterpiece, and is in my mind at least, easily the best game in the Final Fantasy series. And I think that Steel Ball is really going to have to step it up if they ever want to top this masterpiece of a game. The fact that such a simple game can cause so much fear is amazing, and I really hope we see more games like this. In fact, no game has ever made me more terrifying than games that follow in Final Fantasy IV's footsteps. Final Fantasy IV horror formula is so effective, and in my mind at least, it's one of the best horror game experiences I've ever had. Well, that does it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this game, and as always, if you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.